Hey everyone, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we're gonna make setup bearings. If you sought this subject out, then you probably already know what a setup bearing is. But for those of you guys who don't, basically this is a Dana 44 carrier assembly. Uh, they're similar in all the Dana models, and Danas have been in every kind of truck, Chevy, Ford, Scout, uh, Jeeps, obviously. And the bearings that go on the side of the carrier are press fit. Right? So you got to press it with a press, obviously. Um, but when you're setting your backlash, and the backlash is okay, as I was saying. Backlash, you picture the ring gear on here, is the distance of the ring gear to the pinion, okay? But when you're setting up new gears, you don't have the old, you know, you can't use old shims as the go-by. I mean, you can use it to get close, but you need to keep taking the bearings on and off, shimming and putting it back in, testing your patterns, blah, 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 blah. So you need to be able to take bearings on and off. If you use a regular bearing, you have a strong possibility, if not a probability, of damaging it. So what you do is you basically hone out this center. You take a little bit of material out of the center of this bearing, and that will allow you to turn it from a press fit into a slip fit. On the Danas also, along with the relation of the ring gear to the pinion is also the depth of the pinion in the carrier. And one of the carrier um, races, on, it's a, this is a Timken 31520, so the one that, the main one that sits inside the carrier, uh, that has shims behind it. So that needs to come in and out. So this also needs to be turned into a, like a dummy that you can do your fit up with, figure out your shims, and then put the real thing and bang the real thing in for the final time and this one you make into a setup race by machining the outside now I've read a lot of different ways to do it um, so for the bearings not the races I picked one of these up and it is a teeny tiny brake cylinder hone so just like an engine hone I'm gonna basically Chuck this up to the uh, thingy majiggy vise, and I'm going to try to hone it out. I have no idea if it's going to work. Um, this uh, inside race, uh, I actually hogged this out with a uh, die grinder, which worked pretty well, but the thing is, it doesn't have the bearings on it, so I was able to easily do that. I might, might end up going that way, and then I got to clean the bearings really well to make sure there's no metal shavings in it. Um, by using the hone, I'm just getting metal dust, and that'll come out with solvent. I'm just worried about getting shaving stuck in here. Obviously, I don't use this for the final, but I'm just paranoid. Let's get to it. The bearings that came with the kit I bought from Tom's are high quality, um, but they're Kyoto bearings. They're Japanese bearings. You know, the ones I bought just online were Timken to make setup bearings out of. So before you actually uh, do this, you want to take a digital caliper and measure to make sure that the dimensions, the depth specifically, of, of both are equal, completely equal. Because otherwise, when you go to shim, it'll be different. Now, they, of course, they should be equal because it's the same application, but should be and are you know, sometimes two different, two different things. I'm very, very curious to see if this works. And I mean, I know it will work. I just, I, I don't have, what I don't have an idea of is how long it's going to take. I mean, it could take for, forever. Why does it take forever? Anybody know? You, Brian? You, Mikey? No? Okay. It's because uh, bearing material is 
It's leaking hard, man. It is really hard steel. I mean, it's like some of the hardest steel in your car, I think. So it's just hard to take material off. You know, it's not like the material axle housings are made out of. That stuff's like butter. Let's get this show on the road, man. Eh? Is really slow going with the hone, so I'm gonna use a die grinder, rough it up a little bit, then hit it with the hone again. So it took took some time. I'm not gonna lie, but. Uh, Comes on, comes off. The alternative to this, if you don't want to spend all this time die grinding, and die grinding is the way to go, the honing just doesn't take off enough material, is you pay 86 bucks for a set. But you still do not get the setup race with that 86 bucks. So, what's your time worth? Uh, for this one, what I do is, I basically, I don't have a belt sander, so I, lay this down and I use the indented lettering on there. There's Timken lettering on there. I use that as sort of my visual guide. Then I go like this. Rotate, pull, rotate, pull. I, so I'm almost there on the um, the race. I, I remember reading this somewhere, but you basically go until the letters are, you're just about to lose the letters. I can get it in and out, but sometimes it gets hung up. And I don't want that to happen when I'm setting my stuff up. So I'm gonna take a little more off tomorrow. It's getting too noisy, it's late. And then same with this, it's, it's there. And it'll go on, but this is the other side of the same carrier, but it's a little rough. And it's fine if everything stays the same temperature, but uh, you know, when there's temperature differentials, I'm just gonna take a little bit off and I gotta do the other bearing, so. It's a lot of work. Do not ever, ever loan anybody your setup bearings. You know, it's tomorrow and I just remembered that this really is the best tool for this job. It's like a flap wheel rotary thing. But it's too big for these bearings. I'm gonna try to do it anyway. But that, if you can get the right size one of those to hog out your bearings, that's the way you wanna go.